told me I was Stalin. He like shoved me and said, quit Stalin. Yeah, and to me it was comical because, I don't know, I definitely don't go backwards. I don't think he took a shot. Yeah. What was the most amount of money you ever got paid to wrestle a match? Or, no, you, can, I'll tell or, you, or you can give us a pay range. You can give no, us a range. I'll tell you both. I tell you, I, I, got, I got two things that come to mind. I do want to bring up uh, the Joe's fight night. There's a clip going around of you and Thomas Gillen going at yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, that was, was. What was said in that moment? Uh, I'll give you the gist. I'm going to give you the whole story here. So this is really good. He could leave. If we come, we want to leave. We want to be. We transfer. All right, what's going on, stalemates? We have uh, Iowa State legend in the house, <laughs> Iowa Hawkeye legend in the house, yeah. Michigan legend in the house. Yeah, there we go. Um, I've been trying to do the Metcalf interview for a while, but I feel like there's already a lot of Metcalf interviews, so I was trying to figure out how I wanted to do it, wait till the right time, and I feel like now's our time. Today's so the day. Nice to meet you. Today's the day. All right. Let's start off with something that has fascinated me ever since I figured this out, and I said it right when I walked in, mm -hmm. skateboarding. Okay. Because we yeah. kind of have a little bit of a skateboard background. We started figuring out how to use, like, cameras and stuff because of, like, old skate videos. Okay. Like, they were kind of like, did you watch skate videos or did you just do it? Oh, yeah. Were you into skateboarding or you just like, it was like a sport to you? No, I was into it. I was immersed into it. Like so, the styles and everything? Um, sure, yeah, the styles, but even the culture of it. You know, like yeah. I wore the clothes, I watched the skate videos, listened to the music, went to the concerts, brought my skateboard with me. You know, it was that sort of deal. So, yeah, I mean, I was Im immersed that way. Who got I mean. who got you into it? Because I've, I've done, my, done a little research yeah. for this interview. You guys might be surprised. But yeah. you, you kind of have more of like a... I don't like this word, but like a jock background where you mm -hmm. you did every sport. Pole vaulted, yep. uh, amazing breaststroker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Really good at breaststroking. Yeah, yep. uh, wrestler mm -hmm. and uh, skateboarding. So that's kind of the black sheep there. So who who was the one that kind of put you on like? Well, try this out? honestly, it was like a lot of things. My older brother. Mm -hmm. So I I don't know if he started running with a crowd or what got him into it, but I think one day he came home and was like, "Mom, I need a skateboard." Right. Of course, he got a skateboard, and then, you know, time goes on, and I'm like, well, I need a skateboard, too. So how it honestly all started was, like, a grind rail. So that's why, like, my, the best stuff that I can do best are grinding. Like, I can do stair sets and things like that, because that's all we started with. We had, like, a rail that was, I don't know, 24 inches high, and we could adjust it. So we started really low, and then we got it all the way up, and we just sat in the driveway and just played on that grind rail over and over and over and over and over again. My brother and I, that was just kind of what we did. And then we transitioned from that to, like, skate parks and stuff like that, you know. So my brother got me into it just because it was a phase he was going through. It was a phase that I went through with him. <laughs> Do you feel like, um, like, for me, the parallels I draw between skateboarding and wrestling, and for those who maybe haven't done either one of them or yeah. maybe you've only done one, is, like, you kind of got to learn to get hurt a lot and, like, accept that where before – skateboarding and wrestling like for me personally there was really nothing else that it was like yeah. oh you're gonna have to like you might get hurt and not only like you might get hurt you're gonna get hurt and then you're yeah. gonna have to learn how to deal with that do you mm -hmm. do you feel like there's a uh anything similar between those things with wrestling and skateboarding um i think the thing that drew me to it like a lot of things and you could say golf is the same way i do a lot of golf now um is like it's really hard mm. it's really hard to be good at and it's something that you can spend time alone that's, and that's why I really liked about it is I could spend time alone over and over and over in my driveway to try to perfect one thing, you know. And that's maybe a fault but a, a benefit of kind of my personality is that when I start doing something, I want to try to be the best at it, right. So I'm going to draw a connection between wrestling and skateboarding. It would be that it's, it's really hard. But you, if you can put the time in and individually, right, you could put the time in to kind of perfect the craft. Um, so that's kind of why I really liked about it. I, I didn't get hurt very much. But there certainly were the, the deal where you're standing over this set of stairs and you're like, I'm probably going to wreck, you know, definitely the first 10 times, you know. And, um, so, oh, yeah. did, did you have decisions where you were like, and I'm not going to go completely in a skateboarding, but, yeah, but no, it's just fascinating it's for me. Yeah. Did you ever have decisions where like, all right, the wrestling stuff starting to get serious or the pole vaulting or whatever you're doing at that time, mm -hmm. do I really want to do this like eight stair, six stair, whatever you're doing because I might. Yeah. Hurt myself, or was that not really how your brain no, was No, I was kind of a dummy. Yeah, you were trying I, I kind of just did it. I ripped it. Um, what really happened in, when I went to college is when I stopped, and that was through the advice of college? my – College? Yeah. I did not know that you were going all the way. So yeah. you were, you went through high school and everything. Yeah. No injuries like that? 
Yeah, no. I mean, obviously you get tweaked up or something like that, but nothing crazy. And then I went to college, and my coach, Tom Brands, was like, listen, you ain't doing that crap no more. And I, I didn't – I was like, you're right. Did you yeah. bring the board to um, – Like skating around Iowa City and stuff like that? Well, this is uh, Blacksburg, Virginia oh, Tech. Right, remember, right, I started right. there, right? So um, I might have brought it. I don't remember exactly what it was, but I, I knew it was the right thing too because I was like, all right, the progression where I'm going. Because I was to the point where I was like, I was ready to start competing and stuff. Like I was, I went to a couple competitions and I kind of chickened out. You didn't went, do but then go, but yeah, I don't know why. I just I went with my buddies and like I ran the course and then I was like, ah, screw it, I'm not gonna do it, you know. And I sit and watch and I was like, crap, I would have killed these dudes. You, you think know? you would have? Uh, that one in particular, the whatever local competition it was, that like the kids' skills just weren't as good as mine in my opinion. <laughs> of course, you gotta you gotta let it rip, but it was a really short, I don't know, park. Does that make so nothing was very big so. That would have been a little bit easier, I think. So, what uh, what made you go straight into like, because like I've said three times now, you've done a ton of different sports. What yeah. made you be like wrestling is the one like that? This is the obvious. It was the one since I was a little child. You know, ever since I started when I was eight years old, I knew that this was like this was the sport for me. I knew it right even at that age. I was like, you know, I did, I did the baseball. I did like everything. You know, but nothing um, on both sides. Nothing gave me the feeling like when you win. The feeling like, hey, like, I put all the work in. I won. But also when you lost, too. Like, having the ability to, to point at myself and say, hey, I lost. Uh, this is the reason why I lost. And I can make those changes and I can go back and make, make a change for the future. You know, that was, is something I really liked. Um, it, within my personality, probably, I kind of always joke, you know, like in football. Like, it, it killed me to know that, like, someone else missed the tackle and we lost the game. You know, like, that was hard for me to the team sport right now i love football and i played a lot of different team sports but that's what i think i love the most about wrestling was it was on me win or lose either way i can i can handle i can take it one thing that i've heard about you quite a bit it's not really so it's about you i guess but like you'll see this new kid this new recruit coming up and they'll be like oh he wrestles a lot like metcalf like you're kind of they do a lot with brett Favre too Mm because nobody really played football like brett Favre before brett Favre, in my opinion i'm a packers fan yeah but uh go pack go Yep, thank you. And then <laughs> for you, I feel like you kind of get that same comparison. How do you feel when people say, like, you know, oh, Casey Sudersky has that Metcalf style? It's yeah. like a style now. Sure. Are you aware of that or this is the first time someone kind of um, Yeah, that no, out? I've heard of that a ton. Like you said, especially out when uh, you talk to coaches and they're like, oh, we trained them just like Metcalf, just like you sort of deal. Um, so, I mean, I think it's cool. I mean, it's, it's it obviously meant that I left an impact of some sort and probably at, at the college level. Right. Um, so what does that mean to me? I don't know if you asked that, but I'll answer it. Um, it, to me, it's just like a mentality. It's a pace. It's a, but do you like it? Do you think that, uh, it's okay for someone to say that you're like, that's not like me. Uh, yeah, no, I think it's a compliment, you know, again, it, they don't necessarily it is a compliment. I think. They don't, to me, like you don't have to wrestle like I do. You don't have to hit a high crotch, right? Like to me, like, at least what I was trying to get across or kind of how I was brought up and trained was more of a mentality, more of like a pace and a, a good example. One of the things that killed me the most was not choosing down my senior, senior year when Lance I won Palmer. the NCAA tournament. Yep. Really? Yep. And Brandon, they asked you that right afterwards and you said, you, your, your basically answer was like, you know, I could have got away, but why? I don't need to, especially if I'm good on my feet. So do yeah, you still stand by that? No, we, we prep talked that, like, hey, listen, this is probably going to come up, and you need to listen to your coaches. And I was like, all right. You're why, right. Do you, why do you, you want, like, who cares? Well, again, let me say, the ego, dude. Like, this is, like, a, a, a style and a way that I compete, right? Like, you go down. You go down, and you escape. Right? Yeah. Um, Did you have that Big Ten match in your head? Is that kind of? No, kinda... no, no, just no need to. Like, he's not going to take me down. So. so the coaches were right, and it was all good. It was all good. But it's just one of those things, and as I explained to you, but if, if I'm going to tell you what – my style was it had more to do than winning and losing it was like how like wh- how are you going to rep yourself represent yourself out on the mat um and again a lot of it's ego driven right but um it is a, a style and, a, and, a, and again putting points up and then cutting the guy and keep building that lead and having the guts to do that you know um i don't know to the, to my detriment sometimes too you know to my detriment knowing that like my style probably didn't 
help me sometimes. I probably lost some matches because of it. <laughs> do you uh, do you read books very much? Or you you, uh, really? you no? could pull one out, okay. maybe, maybe not. There's a book called Ego is the Enemy, and uh, mm -hmm. it's this awesome author. His name is Ryan Holiday, and uh, he talks a lot about like stoicism and stuff like that. But mm -hmm. in this particular book, he gives a ton of examples that are perfect. Like that's a perfect example of like your ego is like, no, I should have went down. But who knows? I'm not saying you wouldn't have got yeah. out. You know, you probably yeah. could have got out or whatever. But uh, that could have been an example of how, like, your ego is your own enemy to mm -hmm. how you would have maybe not get out. So I'm sure, like, when you're thinking about coaching nowadays, you kind of – are you thinking – For sure. Are you no, thinking I'm, the Metcalf way or are you like, no? I'm no, coaching up the right way, yeah. the smart way, right? Yeah. Um, I don't know. I guess I don't know what point I'm trying to get at other than for certain um, – part of my style was more about doing it right, right? And to me, doing it right was choosing down and no one can hold you down, right? Doing it right was never stalling, right? Doing it right was continuing to build your lead no matter what, right? And then, yeah, obviously, sometimes there, there's times where you don't need to keep building your lead. Maybe take the win, that sort of deal. So I think it's really good for building a guy, really good for building that, okay, in the growth of, of their, in the sport, because a lot of it has to do with your mental aspect, your mental game. Um, but there's certainly times where, like I said, there's times where, I can I can pinpoint and be like, well, I was I was trying to you know be me and I I you know what though I always say I've I've lost a couple matches from being an idiot but I've won a lot more and I I did a lot more separation and, and breaking guys and dominating because of that same mentality so I uh is that volume good by the way yep yeah. okay um I wasn't gonna go there but you brought the you, go there you brought, go. you brought the match up the uh, the Big Ten one against Lance Palmer yeah now I'm an Iowa State fan so I did not like you majority of That's my okay, wrestling yeah. career but we got that out the way yeah and uh, I say that because I actually while I'm watching that match deep inside me I'm like well, Hawkeye I don't care how this yeah plays out but now I'm like you know I, I guess just to say now but when I'm watching that I'm still in that mindset of like I don't like Bear Metcalf, mm -hmm. but I will be on your side, and uh, and I don't know like the rules change a lot, so I don't know what exactly the rule book is. So mm -hmm. rule, rule book YouTube, let me know. But when you were standing up when he had the boots in, and you get hit for stalling. Yeah, How, that was the rules back then. So that was that's a good call by by the. That officials. was the rules. If you stand up when the legs are in, you were stalling. And so, how do you as a as a kid, you're you're underneath there, right? And you're like, <laughs> what are you thinking about? Because I don't he's know. not really. I think he had t both of them in, right? Yeah, yeah. And so I don't know. You know, I wasn't a leg rider, so maybe he was. Maybe he had it. You know, it was one of them funky things, and we have rules like that now too. That like, they made them, and you're like, this doesn't make any sense. And then a year later, they change it. I th believe it was something like that where that became the rule, um, just at that time. And we all knew the rule. You know, it was one of them deals where like, I mean, you know the sport enough where like the guy puts your legs in. Like sometimes you don't have an option. You gonna go to your stomach, or are you gonna sit there and actually stall, or are you gonna stand up and create action, right? So right now it's the complete opposite, right? Right now is if a leg comes in, get to your feet, and then stay there because that guy has to return you, or he's got to take his legs out and let you go. Right. right? Do you so, think it's better now? I think so. I mean, if the guy on bottom can stand up, he should be able to stand up, right? And then the guy with the boots in, if they're in there good, he can get you flat on your stomach. You know, I think that that makes sense. Um, but yeah, that was that was a semi important part of the match. The biggest pivotal of that one was the escape. So he came up at the end. Well, this is like second period. I, okay, this is long. I'm old, man. Okay, but he he escaped and dove back in on a double. Okay, I sprawled and locked my hands around the stomach. He hadn't they hadn't given him the escape point yet, so he got like oh the free I know point. What you're talking about because the yeah. time the time so yeah, he got like the, the free point. So then. We I go out of that. bounds, and then he's back down again because he hadn't escaped yet. Right. So he basically got, like, the free point. And every time we wrestled, I always knew it was, like, it's how I felt was I'm going to get the one takedown that I need to get, but it's always going to be close because he was just so tough to get to, um, whether it was his style or whatever, and he was strong as can be. Um, so that was definitely a pivotal point because then it was like, all right, I got the one takedown I needed, um, but now he's got this extra point plus the escape point. Well, shoot, now um, – now I got I got to go score again, and I was kind of big again. Talk about my uh, my ego, right? I was big on like I don't do overtime, like I don't go to overtime. So I definitely was not. I can tell you I was not at the end of that match thinking chill for a little bit and we'll get him in overtime. I was thinking I got to get it now, like right now. You can't go to overtime. <laughs> do you feel like if you went back to uh, I, I really wasn't gonna go. That's all right. Go there, dude. but I here we it. are. Yeah. Uh, do you feel like if you were to go back and 
redo your college career or whatever um kind of basic question but if you were to go back would you think a lot of your fixes would have been uh tactical decisions instead of like because I'm sure you couldn't really work that much harder. Now, you know what? That one, that, that match in particular was just, you know what? It just kind of, honestly, I, I remember I was in on the leg. We kind of rolled around. He ended up on top. You know, it just is what it and is. And you slammed the, do you remember doing that? Do what I do? Uh, the, there was like three seconds left and you're, bam. You like uh, slammed your hand on the mat, you know. Oh, I was mad Yeah, yeah. something? Okay. I like seeing that. I'm okay. Not, yeah. Yeah. Not. yeah, I don't remember that. But no, I, I wouldn't say that I can guarantee I could fix that. I think the things that. Definitely 9 in the in the national finals. There was some, uh, not maybe tactically, but my mindset was just off. You know, I was doing some stupid stuff as far as you know in preparation for that match. So um, what do probably could have stupid stuff like. Um, again, this is not to take away from anything. That dude went out there and beat me. Um, but that whole year, um, again, I was kicking butt taking names and i think that my my thought process was looking forward a lot like hey i gotta make this world team right i want to make this world team so i remember like that morning of the nca uh finals i woke up and i did 10 one minute bike sprints which i was gonna say you said stupid stuff and i feel like the audience stupid. is probably thinking partying doing no, this no, and no, that. no 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 i know because i'm so i'm you like know. you must have been doing something yeah no i overdid it because in my head i was like I knew I had the NCAA finals now, and then in a couple of weeks we got the U.S. Open, and I got to win that thing because I got to make the world team. So, which is so stupid of me, you know, to like basically train through the national finals, right? Now, not excuses. Okay, that dude went out and beat me, but I did feel like trash, you know, that, right. that day. And I remember uh, that night, uh, my high school coach, who uh, Roy Hall, who knows me really well, he came up. He goes, "What the hell did you do?" I was like, "What are you talking about?" Like I didn't even at that time I didn't even connect, you know. I, just felt like me doing me. He goes, you, you were walking really slow up the stairs. He goes, you didn't have your hop. What was what? what what'd you do? Wow. That's what'd crazy. you do? And I, I didn't even see it. And I think it took years later before I finally like came. I was like, oh, yeah, that was probably a really stupid idea for me to do that. Again, does it change the outcome? I'm not going to predict that. But it's almost like a parent level of a relationship where your parents can almost spot out things that you wouldn't think that other people could <laughs> sure. kind of point out, but they could. Yeah. But since they know you so well, because I've watched you walk up on a stage like that a hundred times, and that was off. You know, your your step up on the stage was off. I was like, oh, it probably was. Yeah. <laughs> um. So when you went to I, well, first of all, the Virginia Tech thing, and then um, ultimately, I'll just say when you committed to Tom Brands or whatever, right? Yeah. And you were going to be an Iowa Hawkeye. Um, I was listening to a podcast that you did. It wasn't really Iowa. It was just like Tom and Terry because you grew up on. I was, well, at that time it was just, I grew up on Tom and Terry, but at right. that time Terry wasn't even the coach right. or an assistant coach. It was Tom. Yeah. Tom. So mm -hmm. you were really connected with Tom and he just happened to go to Iowa. If he would have mm -hmm. went somewhere else, you probably would have went there. Yep. Right. Yep. Um, who, who, when you thought of an Iowa Hawkeye in your mind or like the, you know, you hear that mentality, the Iowa style and stuff. Um, and like I said, you get that same thing, mm -hmm. the Metcalf style, um, who was your Metcalf or who was your person? Who was your image of an Iowa Hawkeye in your head? Yeah. So again, I, I, I've, I think I've said this before. Um, so I'm old enough. I don't know how old you are, but I'm old enough that like we had VHSs, dude. All right. So there was no internet. Like we just started to get internet. So like I only had what was presented in front of me and all we had was a VHS of Tom and Terry brands. So I, I don't even know if I like related in my head again it, when I'm young right. that that they're Iowa like that means nothing to me it's just like I was told like these guys are great be like them does that make sense yeah so I don't I would even venture to say I mean I'm sure again once I got later in high school but like I didn't know who Dan Gable was how would I unless for some reason someone gave me some footage again in a VHS tape like I wouldn't have access to it you know what mm. I mean. Does that make sense? Yeah, no, it makes We don't have sense. the resources we have now. So I don't think that there was um, like a Hawkeye necessarily legend in, in my head when I was growing up as a kid. There was just this video of these Brands Brothers and the, my coach that said, be like them. And that's what we had and that's what we did. Okay. So, <laughs> so what was that like the first time you're sitting across in the coach's corner from your you know, youth idols, I guess, or if you want to say, oh, I don't know. If well, that's the you know what though? There's so, there's so many years with both of them. Um, that, that doesn't, I don't think I reminisce in that way. You know, our relationship has transpired in a lot of different directions and ways since then. I mean, that was an, Oh, uh, well, in 05, he probably started recruiting me. Right. So we're going on pushing 19 years 
of having some version of a relationship with them. So, so yeah, I don't think I sit there and reminisce that way or anything. I do want to bring up uh, just stalemates. We got to do a little bit of uh, drama and tea, and you can answer or not answer. But the Joe's fight night seemed to be the moment where it was like, all right, the new guys are in town. Like, you guys are in town. They send Thomas Gilman over there. Yeah, yeah. There's a clip going around of you and Thomas Gilman going at yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, that was, was. What was said in that moment? Uh, I'll give you the gist. I'm going to give you the whole story here. So, this is really good. This is really good. I think this would be good stuff. So I'm sitting there, and Thomas Gilman, you know, like he he shoulder bumps me from behind, right? And I, to the point where like I took some steps, and I was like, "What the heck?" You what know? was your relationship with uh, with Gilman at that point? Gilman, well, again, you gotta know, I had just left Iowa, so I'm sure that I'm a traitor. I know how it is inside that room. I'm a traitor. I'm a bunch of other things that are not really who I am, right? Um, so I even couldn't kind of got it because again, at this point, I don't know how much many years older than I am th than him, but a number of years older where I was like, I, I get it, dude. I, I know what environment you're in. I know that I'm supposed to be the enemy and you're supposed to be a douchebag, but come on. So he, elbow, he bumps me with his shoulder. And of course I, I decided, I'm like, you know what? I'm, I'm going to make sure that he knows that like, that ain't cool. He can't do that. Right. So he goes up and does his thing up on the stage and he comes off and I like, I'm like eyeballing him and I'm like perfectly lining up with him. And I don't remember exactly what I said, but it was something pretty challenging, you know, like, I don't know, I'm going to make something up like, Hey, I don't know who the F you think you are, right? But so, some version of that. Right. And, um, he, he said something like you've changed. Um, I got a world silver medal. What do you got? And I was like, dude, I'm proud of you, man. And I remember I smacked him on the chest. Like, hey, I'm proud of you. Because my message was like, hey, I'm proud of that, dude. Like, and I can be proud of you even though you represent, you know, the other team because we can be adults, right? Either way, I smacked him on the chest. I'm like, oh, he's going to swing because I hit him too hard. Like, I remember being like, oh, no, it's going to happen. But it did It was literally a backhanded slap kind of like, you know, or backhanded yeah, compliment. Whack. Backhanded compliment. Was yeah. I mean, like that kind of thing. So either way, we got in each other's face and it was – it was me just saying, like, dude, like, wait till you grow up. Like, I, I, I didn't think that I was being too big of a douche myself. But, um, but to finish this story, so this is really where it's really cool for Thomas Gilman. Really cool for Thomas Gilman. Um, not that I was right and he was wrong in that situation. Everyone's wrong in something super stupid like that. But at the, um, at the last Olympic trials, so he was standing there, and I happened to be standing next to him, and he comes up to me and goes, hey, he goes, I was thinking about you this morning. And I was like, you were? I goes, did you think to yourself, don't lose first round like Metcalf did in 16? And he laughed. He goes, no, 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 no. He goes, you remember Nighthawk? I goes, yeah, I remember Nighthawk. I remember Nighthawk. He goes, remember what you said about the bubble? Because what I said to him was I said, hey, once you get out of that bubble, you'll understand. right? You'll yeah. understand why you think I'm a traitor, but I'm, I'm just a dude. Um, and he said, uh, he goes, hey, you remember the bubble? I goes, yeah, yeah. He goes, I get it now. He goes, I get it. I'm sorry about that. So I thought that was pretty cool. Yeah. You know, for him to obviously he laughed and he's at Penn State now. So I thought that was pretty neat that he kind of, you know, went out of his way to say, hey, that was probably pretty messed up on both of our parts too. And it was all good. We had a good old laugh. And it's crazy how confrontation can kind of bring that out like many, many years later. And, yeah. you know, it probably feels good to like, you know, it's never good to have like a, you know, that feeling. You haven't, especially if you can't, especially if you're not around someone a whole lot, that you can go and like, you know, whatever they call it, yeah. you know, like, you know, smooth it over or whatever. It probably felt good to. It was all right, though. And just like he said, once you leave, once you're, you're out of that environment, I don't know. I get it. I even forgave him. I was like, I didn't even care. When it happened, I was like, eh, I know. I know what happened. We'll get down the road here. and He'll see, you know. All just right. Like, I've done a bunch of stupid stuff, too, I'm sure. So <laughs> we're going to get never. We're going to get never. To it. <laughs> the next one here is uh, it was kind of a beef, but it was hard telling if it was a beef or promo or not. And I've been fascinated with that this particular night i didn't go i don't know why i've gone to okay. like everything but i did not go to is it Aegon? Aegon, which one the one where you met, wrestled aaron pico there was a little okay. bit of yeah, uh yeah. tenacity would that be the word what would be the right word for you and aaron pico's relationship at that time um pre-match i don't think it was uh i don't know for certain they were trying to build the card up like like a fight card you know and then they Again, they've tried to do this so many different times, versions of it, and it's just really hard. It's really hard, and I'm sure that you've felt it, like to pay guys what guys are probably worth. It's but insane. to still that, that that thing, I think, like set 
the wrestling cards back because what they were what i heard people were getting yeah. paid for that yeah, yeah. was like why would any wrestlers say they're gonna wrestle for less because what they're paying that night was yeah yeah it was good money insane. it was really good money anyway um, sorry pico but yeah either way so they're setting it up that way and the other thing that was happening at least from my point of view was certainly like i was the guy and then he was like the new prodigal young kid coming up so they're trying to give him an opportunity to knock the knock the guy off right and I, I felt like I was aware of this, and I knew it. And um, side point, when this whole deal was proposed, I, I'm like, listen, you're just trying to promote your guy. This has nothing to do with me. So my deal was like, I was like, whatever his deal is, like, make sure mine's the same. Because I don't want to get bent over here and, like, he's making a big fat paycheck, and then you're giving me a couple thousand dollars. And Did you have an agent? No. A no, manager? No. no. So I, uh, that was my negotiation. My negotiation is whatever his deal is, that's my deal. Okay, like I'll do this because I, but I just I knew what was going on. Um, so was there animosity there? Maybe a little bit because I, I knew he was there to try to knock me off to try to make a name for himself, which is fine. That's what he should be doing. Um, if I remember right, again I'm I'm old. I forget all this stuff. But if I remember right, it was something like he was. Uh, he told me I was stalling. Like put, he like shoved me and said quit stalling or something in, in the I, match. Yeah, to me it was comical because. I don't know. I definitely don't go backwards, and I don't think he took a shot. So that was kind of my point was, like, dude, like, I ain't stalling if you ain't shooting. You right, know? right. So it was, it was a little testy there, but there was a lot. He ended up making more money than I did. Maybe. After losing. Yeah. Yeah, so. Um, <laughs> you're also somebody I think missed out on the NIL opportunity. Um, I feel like, especially with the Iowa fan base behind you, I know we interviewed Tony Ramos one time, and he told us that he missed out on a shoe deal because of, uh, well, that was post-college yeah. or whatever, but I feel like if you were, you know, let's say you were in college in today's world, you probably would have been getting some deals. Do you sure. feel like you would have, too? Uh, you know, do you feel like I that mean, was something? I mean, I don't know. I guess so. I mean, our, again, our environment was so much different, you know. Like, I couldn't imagine going up to my coach and saying, hey, coach, I'm going to leave unless you pay me 300 grand. Right. Like those words, I couldn't imagine those words coming out of my mouth. So in order for me to have collected in, like, like you're talking about and like a lot, a lot of what we see today, is that's essentially what you got to do. Now, could there have been some organic things like within the community? Possibly, yeah. But the reality is, is that um, they got to pay to retain you or they got to pay to bring you in on a transfer status, you know. So I don't know. I don't, know, I, I don't see myself being that that guy that would have went up and and said, "Hey, man, you got to pay me. You're outside. Le I'm leaving." You know? All right. This next but, question, you can answer it however you want to do. Um, but when you left college, you were you know four time world team member, right? Yeah. And um, Iowa Hawkeye, you said that you got paid a lot of money to be on that Aegon match. Sure. Yeah. What was the most amount of money you ever got paid to wrestle a match or do a promo or an ad? Now, you only have to answer one of those things. So what was your biggest yeah. paycheck related to like wrestling as being like this wrestling name? So either you can answer, you can tell us exactly how much. Yep. You can tell us how many digits it was. Or, no, you, can, I'll tell or, you, both. or you can give us a pay range. You can give no, us a range. I'll tell you both. I tell you, I, I, got, I got two things that come to mind. Um, the biggest payday I ever had, um, I want to make sure I get this right, four, four would have been uh for competition would have been um baku the okay. grand prix i won that and i think it was like four thousand four thousand matched it was about twelve thousand dollars Twelve thousand dollars to winning a tournament yeah it was in baku um but they also gave me a watch that was worth like seven thousand was oh wow yeah you still have it yeah yeah i haven't even opened it it's is still there, it's a it? brightling something like that i don't know <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I don't do watches so twelve thousand seven, so almost 20 grand yep. for like one event yep was that a, excuse me for not knowing this was that a like uh baku is that a country what is that azerbaijan oh okay it's a country yeah okay. baku okay. Is, azerbaijan, yeah, in azerbaijan. yep okay it was um <laughs> so yeah it was the grand prix at least how i'm not sure exactly how it is now but then Who's you had putting, the, is it a private thing or it was there's oil money and stuff like that okay there, yeah and then definitely the the Aegon event was nineteen thousand. For one match, mm -hmm. wow! So we shouldn't have said that. I, I'll we shouldn't have. That. We shouldn't have. We shouldn't have asked that because now I don't Street care. League, no, I mean for no. Street League guys, are gonna be like, no, I think it's already cycled. No, already gone back down. Yeah, nineteen thousand. I don't know. That, holy smokes! That was that was it was it was dumb. It, even at that time, I was like, this is. I had to win though. 
So that's what I mean. Nineteen K to win. Uh, yeah, that was how, however it worked out. That's what it was, and I, only if I won. No agent. No agent. That's no. crazy. But again, he made more and he lost. So. <laughs> yeah. Let me see if I have anything else on here, but that was I was uh, we went we went farther than I thought we would. Oh go. yeah. Well. Um, I know we got to get to practice here. Um, Solid yeah. So, did you have any MMA offers? No, never had an MMA offer. I know I had a lot of people that would be like, "Oh, you sh you should have done this, done that." One, I don't think I would. I've been punched a couple times and I got knocked out all those times, so I don't think I have much of a a steel jaw. But nope, never had an opportunity. It wasn't as much of a thing. I don't know. Either that or people thought I was soft. Who knows? Okay. Last I didn't pursue it myself. So. Yeah. So it never really was on your radar. I feel like now it's almost like a lot it's of like guys. a multiple choice answer, and that's kind of earned its way on the, yeah. on the thing. Yeah. Um, if you had a magic wand and you could go back to your college days and you could either have today's NIL rule or today's transfer portal rule, which one would you have taken? You can only take one. <laughs> I, I, the transfer portal rule or the NIL? Or NIL. Um, I got to go uh, transfer rules because then I have an extra year eligibility. Yeah, and my boy Dustin, who I – you would have taken that. I think we're probably pretty good, but it killed me to watch him win a national title. Really? And I didn't have a shot. Like, I wanted to be in that bracket. You grew up wrestling him. Oh, yeah. I wanted to be in that bracket. No. Really? So you would go back and all the money? He didn't care? <laughs> no. no. Again, I, what's – I mean, it's silly. Yeah. Again, I, 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 to my own detriment, my ego would probably have said, do it this way. Do it the right way. But I don't blame the kids either. Cool. You know? You graduate college and guess what you're worth? nothing yeah so yeah it's just there's I, no pro sports but i get it i feel like for us whenever we try to get matches we will try to get a kid straight out of college and those are the kind of worst kids to deal with because they have this um you know big inflated like i'm the king which sure. they are you know they earned it and everything but then you're kind of like dude and this is kind of wrestling at the same time and in a couple of years you know uh -huh. that's, and that's unless you go up. on and do Jordan or Snyder and or Dake right. or Taylor. Obviously, those, man, we've had a stretch of guys that that kept that momentum going. Right. Um, but how, what other ones have? Right. Not many, you know. And we'll see who who can beyond those names, you know. So that's why I I highly regard those guys because I went through it, and I know how hard it is to win consistently at that level. So mm. there is one Metcalf philosophy that I think is super badass. All right, which one? Um, and hopefully you said this. Hopefully somebody hopefully. didn't just. Sometimes people will be like, we'll "Oh yeah, you say it. this," and it'll be like, "Be like, oh uh -huh. yeah, Metcalf said it." But you said after you win. It, let me ask you this: Why don't you celebrate? Why? Uh, because it would make my opponent feel <laughs> yeah. like it was a big deal that I won. Yeah, that is that is sick. Yeah. I have uh, again sick and twisted. That's just how my mind works. Is that you know I want you walking off being like that dude expected to win. Like he don't even care. He just won. Yeah, it's sick. It's twisted, but. Everyone's, you know, the that best. is insanely sick. I think that's like, uh, <laughs> yeah, I don't. Where did you say that first? Do you remember where did I see it or no, say, say it? that first? I remember you? exactly where I was when I said it. Yeah, where was it? Well, it was in Carver in the back. There's the ropes and then there's a back room. I don't know. It was a press conference. No, no, no. This was like an interview like this. I was just talking to some dude. Yeah. I remember. Couldn't have even told you what it was for. I think it's one of the best. Wrestling but I remember clubs. saying it and being like, I was like, I exactly communicated what I meant. Like, it was weird, but I remember that. that's exactly how I felt. And that's exactly how I was brought up, too. I was, was afraid I was going to ask you that, and then you would have gave me some lame answer. But you gave me exactly what I wanted I you know, to say. So, Well, should we go to practice? I feel like, it, uh, yeah, it. hopefully yeah. you enjoyed this. And uh, Yeah, I think we dug up some good stuff. Maybe a little controversy. You off? Maybe a little not. No? No? No. 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 All right. I, I was a little so. afraid about the Joe's Nighthawk question. That was buried, but. No, I think I, I, I think I, uh, I think it's. Honestly, I, I really respect Thomas Gilman for how yeah. that ended. And I don't know if I've told him that, but I, I really did. So I wanted to make sure that I get out there that I know that it looked like a thing, but Thomas Gilman is a good dude. And yeah. He was a good dude then. He still is now. Do you have a reaction to that Iowa State um, or that uh, Dresser Brands video that we did? Because we, we talked about the Virginia Tech stuff. Did you get to watch it? Yes, I did, dude. I need to refresh her on it because it was really good, I think. Do you feel like – okay. I thought. I, but I, I would need See, to like anytime, freshly watch it to give you like an accurate sure. – like if you want me to dig – poke holes in it, I'd need to rewatch it. So I – don't like showing people who this sounds twisted because it's about them yeah but yeah. and uh but if you show somebody you're like you're always gonna almost get not get oh well you didn't include this this and this or whatever yeah, yeah. but you know we just try to go off what's kind of already public if i remember correctly it was pretty close pretty good yeah okay yeah 
Yeah. So, and of course now, you know, I'm on the other side of the equation now, right? Sure. With the Virginia Tech deal and how that all went down. So I have different and new perspective than when I, you know, was 18 years old, just a young pup kid thinking everyone's trying to screw me. So. Yeah. I remember asking Dresser about it a while back, like, because I was trying to think, like, should I try to interview both sides? But I was like, I feel like one side. That ain't going to play. Yeah. yeah and work. then I was like, at the <laughs> same time, do when I started doing the research, I'm like, you're not, I felt like you really weren't, I mean, you, you were kind of like the, um, the guy who like kind of you kind of fell on the sword a little bit by by losing eligibility but all, all of us did all five of us did yeah you know and the 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 juiciest part of that probably and i don't remember if you said this but the juiciest part was we were all recruited on the premise of transferring so i missed this meeting but the other four iowa kids came in and sat down and said hey we're coming here but we know this guy's gonna leave and he could leave if we come we want to leave we want to be we transfer and the premise was yes. But just what the Virginia Tech fans were saying. This is Virginia Tech, yeah. This yeah, is Virginia. but the fans, the fan base was saying that too. Knew because that. they were they yeah. were like, well, they all redshirted and like this feels like it was all calculated. Um, I don't know if that'd be a Tom Brands question. I I don't think so. He was halfway through a renovation of his house. He was building a wrestling mat, like, and it just stopped and he left. So it was so, kind, of, kind of false there. Yeah, I think that was pretty false. But the, the biggest and the toughest part for me about the whole de- ordeal was we all came there to this, let's just be honest, this school that sucked at wrestling, but we're the number one ranked recruiting class. Under the pretenses that we came for this guy, if he leaves, we all want to leave too, right? And they said, for sure, if that ever happens, y'all can leave. Um, so that to me is the juiciest piece is that they kind of, now there's a lot of different reasons of why they may have decided to change their mind on that. I have it written actually down that you haven't, I have a written note that you can get a transfer. Um, because that was my dad's, I didn't even know this was all going on. You know, I was a dumb young kid, but my dad went to the point of getting it written down. Like, Hey, I understand there's a threat. You could leave. I want this all in writing. Mm. Still didn't matter, but. Wow. Yeah. All right, we got to go. We gotta yeah, go practice. let it Let's yeah. go. Thanks, yes, for, good, thanks good for coming again. In, man. Yeah, good nuggets, I got yeah. sweaty hands. Not because I'm nervous. It's like 80,000 degrees in this building. <laughs> but uh, click subscribe. Um, drop a comment down below. We'll see you guys next time. Sweet.